So this is my game, um, which is a clone of Minesweeper. It's on a um, 8051 processor, um, hence being called Area 51 after the 8051. Um, like I said, it's a Minesweeper game, which is common on a lot of operating systems like Windows, um, Linux, and that kind of thing. Um, so it's controlled. It's basically running on a development board, which is communicating to the computer via the um, serial RS232 communication port. So um, the actual board is sending back, um, obviously the keyboards from the keys are being sent via um, serial to the board. The board then manipulates them and sends ANSI escape commands and that back to the screen to um, write the terminal, um, clear the terminal and all that kind of thing and move the cursor around the screen. So as you see there's three difficulties at the start, one, two or three, basically determines whether you've got uh, 20, 30 or 40 bombs I think is on the screen. Um, while you're in playing the game, you can use the WASD keys, which is common on the older computer games for the arrows. Um, I use those rather than the actual arrows on the keys because they're standard ASCII characters, so it made the programming um, quite a little bit easier. Um, enter is the fire command, so obviously you want to fire on that square. Um, F um, flags the square if you think there's a bomb there, Q and Q quits the game. Um, and also on this title screen, you can press C. Um, which will turn on cheat mode, as you can see there. So if I then press say three, so that's forty bombs in theory on this one. So let's this with the cheat mode on. It means if you find a bomb, it won't actually. So there you go. That's a bomb. It won't actually quit the game. As you can see, you can see the numbers you're getting um, correlate to how many bombs are in it. So in theory, because this one that's flashing is a three, there's three bombs around it. In theory, there's no bombs there. And obviously this mm. zero uh, means that there's no bombs around that square. So you can see, because there's a bomb there, this one means there's not a bomb there. Um, and things like that all the way through. So, it's, so obviously this can't be a bomb because the one here says, only says one. So, um, yeah, this is the game. So the game obviously plots, as you move around, it plots the numbers as to how many bombs are around that square, so you can see that's a one, so you could clear all of those. That's a zero, so and it not only will it find the bombs that are left, right, up and down of it, it'll also do the diagonals. And also say the squares on the edge obviously don't want to um tell you if there's bombs on the to, which is on the opposite side of the grid. Um so that had to be um programmed because the actual grid um you'll notice is the um basically 16 across and 16 um, up or 16 down whichever way you look at it um, which means that each square in that reference um, can be given basically a 8-bit um, binary number because obviously it's um, the 16 by 16 gives you the 256 um, options so each of these squares represents a binary 8-bit number and then obviously the bombs relate to those numbers so each time you press a, a value it works out the equivalent value of the squares all the way around it and then calculates if any of those checks if any of those squares have the bomb if they do it obviously adds each bomb to the location or to that value so obviously once it's on the end here obviously it only wants to check the say force um, square up square top left of it square to the left square to down to the right uh, sorry down to the left and then square down and obviously the corner ones here only want to check to the left below and below left so the three squares around it which it will do so I don't know if I can find one because it puts the bomb locations in um, randomly so you can see uh, I can't really show very well because of the bomb location um, yeah the bombs go in um, there's basically a pattern but unless you know where the first bomb is plotted you can't actually work out where the other bombs are so unless you probably really knew that or played it quite a few times um, it would appear to be quite random um, there's also a time limit on the game um, which is displayed on the LCD screen on the development board so I can't really show it to you um, but once um, it gets to a certain time the game will time out so it's got about um, just over a minute to go so if I continue playing um, the other option um, to actually win the game you have to flag um, all the squares that contain bombs but every time you flag a square that doesn't contain a bomb um, 
basically if you flag those too many times, i.e. if you try and cheat and just flag every square in the game, it will say game over because um, it will know that you're cheating, so that's um, a cool little feature. But you can see now I know that this is a uh, bomb, I can then go around and put the little flag symbol by using the F key. Um, so we've got about 30, just under 30 seconds and the game should hopefully time out. seconds so any second now two one go so as you see it says time up in the corner if I play the game now I'll put it onto easy mode number one without cheat mode you'll see if I try and if I play the game so if I know, there's definitely, obviously there's a one here, no other squares apart from this one contain a bomb. If I actually enter that without the cheat mode on, it will just quit the game and say, game over as you can see. Let's try and see, no cheating comes up when I've tried to flag that um, square multiple times. So that's the general, um, the game as a whole and how it works. Um, any questions, drop me a message and I'll um, try and answer it. Um, but the development board um, has got a few other little debugging options that you can do. Um, it's got eight LEDs on there and you can switch. Um, there's a little comparator on the board um, which can be switched on. And then when you're playing the game it will highlight. You just rotate the ro um, a variable resistor um, dial round and it switches between different modes on the LED showing which cursor position you're on, where the first bomb is located um, on the grid. Because let's say once you know where the first bomb is, um, on the game, then it will. Um, the, the other bombs in relation to that are a set pattern. So, say ten spaces away, two spaces away, and such. So you could work out where the other bombs are. So you could actually cheat that way. But let's say until you know exactly where the first bomb is, you can't actually do that. So obviously the debugging is the cheat mode is disabled by default. But now, hope you like it. Um, I shall just show you that you can press Q to quit. It takes you back to the main title screen. Any questions? Like I say, drop me a message. Thanks for watching.